So we're going to go with the acid flow to start with in the sense that we need to know that some data is going to be attacker controlled coming in from the binary executable and that is then going to influence the initialization flow. So let's go ahead and take a look at that code now. So we said it was relatively simple. We've got a context data structure that's got this analysis field, ABI field, word size, and then a function pointer. So the context right here is declared as a structure on the stack and it is not initialized at this point. So it's all completely uninitialized data. And then the address is passed into this function, which presumably is going to handle full initialization. So we go to that function. And here I said, you can assume that these fields are going to be attacker controlled, influenced by the binary that the analyst is opening. So we've got the analysis struct set to the analysis on the context. We've got the C ABI set to the ABI. And then this word size is one of those fields that I said you should assume is attacker controlled. So therefore, we're going to assume that the attacker can control the size of this. And therefore, this is going to be word size is going to be acid. So let's assume that this taints the word size. And so now this is attacker controlled. All right, and I also said you should assume that the architecture is attacker controlled. So that's going to taint the is arm field. All right, and that means that the attacker can control whether or not this conditional is executed or not. So let's go ahead and assume that they're going to set this in such a way that it is not going to be executed. Word size is not going to be set to four. And so word size is still just whatever the attacker controlled here. Now, this is an example of a unexpected control flow that occurs because the attacker controls word size. And so they can make sure that it is not one, two, four, or eight, and they can make sure that it's going to fall down into this default case. So if the default case is hit, then that means that context, the analysis, ABI, and word size were all set, but the function pointer was not set. That read address function pointer is not going to be set in there. So that's a problem. Now we've got an uninitialized function pointer. We've got a lack of error checking on this return. So it didn't actually check that it returned false and do anything about an error. So then this context is next used right here in this V table search. So if we drill down into that, we're basically going to be looking for uninitialized usage of that function pointer. So we drill down into that. We have context. All right, that's used to set the analysis. Rolling down further, further, further. And eventually we see the context is passed into this vtable is at our vtable start. We go into there, keep following the context, the uninitialized data. All right, we can sort of pick either of these. Let's just assume it goes into the first one. All right, context again, keep following it. The first usage is right here. And here we go. The context at this point is using the function pointer. So basically, how would an attacker exploit that? They would need to, you know, ultimately be able to control the contents of the stack by this point. And they would basically, you know, call some other functions before this and have those functions lead to something specifically at this offset in the data structure as it exists on the stack, having an attacker controlled value. And then that would mean they could effectively call an attacker controlled function. So that's the basics of this vulnerability. It's just one of those unexpected control flow leading to uninitialized data coming back, staying uninitialized, and then being used somewhere down the line. All right, so what was the fix? Well, the first thing is in that switch statement, they made sure that the default case guarantees initialization. So it's going to initialize that function pointer to some you know, default function pointer that can use, be used for reading 32 bits at a time. Also, they have this initialization of the context to zero. So this is the core root cause, and this will ensure that, you know, always the read address will be initialized. This is sort of like a bonus, and, you know, I approve this. You should always sort of initialize immediately. That's just sort of the best practice that we want to teach is just always initialize it, you know, go back later on and find out if there are performance issues that mean you need to optimize away something, but you should just always initialize immediately whenever possible. But when I was, you know, going back in the code and, you know, trying to find this function to, to see where to put this in to show you the diff, 
uh, I noticed that actually that code pattern, that usage of our anal v table begin, actually exists in multiple other places throughout the code, and that same sort of thing is not initialized anywhere else. So although the main root cause was fixed in the switch, like I said, this is basically going to be inconsistent. And part of the reason why we want to, you know, suggest that everything should always be initialized right away is because what if, for instance, there is a new field added to this struct at some point in the future? And, you know, maybe they remember that, you know, they previously initialized this one, so they think it's all good and, you know, they're doing their initialization. But then maybe they, you know, added some field and they didn't initialize it inside of this vtable begin. And then consequently, ever after all of these functions, you could have uninitialized data access. So again, initialize early and often. That's the best practice here.